I just received a question from Martin about the sensors on the EMTB motors or e-bike motors and I decided it's off season why not answer it and if you got the question you can follow the link in the description to send me yours and perhaps who knows I might answer it with a video or an article. Anyway Martin says I'm buying my first e-bike and your videos uh, thank you thank you I'm unsure about the torque sensors and cadence sensor the pros and cons and are they available for both mid and hub motors many thanks Martin yeah there's been a bit of talk about these sensors and most modern EMTB motors they use both sensors and other sensors so to me it's not one or the other it's more that some motors seem more cadence sensor biased while others seem uh, more torque sensor biased and I'm talking about factory built EMTBs uh, there are DIY motors out there that are purely cadence based my first DIY EMTB I built using the Q100 QT I believe hub motor it was the 201 rpm version that would do 25 km per hour with a 26 inch wheel and 36 volts battery voltage just mounting the motor controller and display battery on the bike left me with no way to activate the motor I could install the handlebar thumb throttle which legally would turn the e-bike into an extremely weak electric moped or I could install the PAS kit PAS is short for pedal assist sensor as far as I remember it's more typically referred to as a cadence sensor but the motor system doesn't only rely on the cadence sensor I also had to install the speed sensor that measures the rotation of the wheel now my e-bike had turned into a street legal e-bike and the display was even working I could read the speed so how is it riding a bike with a cadence sensor only when starting to pedal the motor system would have no idea I'm about to ride until the cranks had moved enough for the magnet to be picked up by the cadence sensor also the motor system needed to know the rear wheel magnet was picked up by its sensor once the system decided the cranks were being pedaled and the bike was moving it would activate the motor and that's how a cadence sensor only e-bike works and it's not a very pleasant riding experience once the motor starts powering up it has no idea how hard you're pedaling or how fast you want to go the motor tries to spin up to its native rpm speed which is determined by the motor design and the battery voltage on my second DIY EMTB build I was using the Bafang BBS01 a 250 watts nominal crank motor powered by a 36 volt battery it behaved just like my first e-bike you had to pedal a bit and the motor was trying to hit about 80 rpm on the chain ring if the battery was fully charged at about 42 volt the motor would want to spin to over 90 rpm unless the speed limiter was prohibiting it if I wanted to ride slower I had to reduce the assistance so the motor wouldn't be strong enough to reach its target rpm if only there was a way for the motor to know how hard you are pedaling uh, so it would know how much power to output and when to ease off cue the torque sensor I guess there are e-bike motors out there that only relies on the combination of torque and speed sensors as far as I remember BH Emotive I believe BH bikes had a rear hub powered e-bike with a sensor that was measuring chain vibrations that might not sound like a torque sensor but it was indirectly measuring how hard the rider was pedaling the chain would vibrate sideways to a varying degree depending on how hard I pedal I rode this bike in about 2015 and it was quite pleasant to ride but every EMTB that I have ridden and reviewed which is like over 90 by now their motors have had a combination of the speed and torque sensors but they rely on these sensors to a varying degree 
the first specialized Bros and Bosch motors from around 2017. They needed the bike and cranks to move a bit before the motor would kick in. This felt like a cadence sensor motor, but if you just pedaled slowly, barely putting any force into the pedals, the motor wouldn't output much power. So there was a torque sensor there too. In my opinion, these motors were cadence sensor biased. The Yamaha motor would rely much more on the torque sensor. You could rest one foot on the pedal and feel the motor twitching from the weight of your leg. And this is a torque based motor. Uh, most other motors uh, require you to have some movement of the pedals before the motor kicks in. Uh, the Yamaha uh, or giant motor only re requires power. So if you look closely, now power kicks in. Putting one foot on the pedal and immediately start riding would leave you with the impression of a torque sensor only bike. I call these torque sensor biased motors. Not even the Rocky Mountain Dynamy motors relied solely on the torque sensor. Its design could lead you to believe you only had to push the torque sensor arm to get going. But we tried pushing the sensor with the bike in a stand and nothing happened. The torque sensor bias versus uh, cadence sensor bias, it's not that obvious anymore. M most motors are getting their stuff together and uh, new motors are faster at transmitting and computing data. Also the sensors are becoming more advanced with a much higher sample rate. It makes less sense talking about torque and cadence bias these days. But there are still some differences that can be attributed to how the motor sensors are being used. Some motors will twitch if you rest your foot on the pedals while stationary. Some motors need more pedal motion than others before deciding to kick in. But pretty much all motors are now easy to control, riding with high assistance on technical trails. So to sum it up, did I remember to answer the question? Torque and cadence sensors are available for both hub and mid-drive motors. For a commuter bike, you can ride with very little effort on, a, on some cadence sensor only bikes. But you're sacrificing some bike control. I would be happy riding the motor found on any modern factory built EMTB. Uh, they use both sensors and they use other sensors too, like gyro and accelerometers and uh, inertial sensors. That's it. Appreciate any likes and subscribes. Thanks for watching.